is the most versatile aircraft in the Navy and Marine Corps arsenal. Combining the speed and agility of a fighter with the power of a light bomber, the F.A. 18 is a lethal weapon, a marvel of modern aircraft design. It's every pilot's dream to fly one, but to reach these elite ranks, trainees must pass a series of rigorous tests. From the training field to the carrier deck, the F.A. 18 has seized center stage as the world's elite strike fighter, the backbone of carrier-based aviation. Every day in the skies over hostile territory, squadrons of F-A-18s are on the prowl. This is the front line where the F-A-18 excels. Striking targets in support of troops on the ground and tracking the horizon for enemy fighters, these jets project power from thousands of feet in the air. And their reach extends to almost anywhere on the planet because their home base is no ordinary airstrip. For the F-A-18, home base is a floating runway churning the waters miles offshore. This is one of the United States' 12 aircraft carriers, a fully functional airport at sea. Even after striking targets and risking the threat of enemy fire, these F-A-18 pilots can't rest until they bring their aircraft safely to a stop on board. A carrier air wing is made up of more than just fighter jets. Each of the 80 plus planes on board carries out a specific task. S3 Vikings for refueling and sub hunting. E-2C Hawkeyes for reconnaissance, EA-6B Prowlers for jamming enemy electronics, and HH-60 Seahawk helicopters for shuttling people and materials. All these aircraft and the carrier itself are focused on one objective, forward force projection. And the one plane best suited for that role is the F-A-18. The F.A. 18 Hornet is a $38 million high-tech machine. It's the smallest plane on the carrier, just 56 feet long and 15 feet tall with a 40-foot wingspan. Its streamlined design is characterized by a long, narrow fuselage and side-by-side -side powerful twin engines. At 21,000 pounds, it weighs half as much as many other fighter jets with an advanced composite airframe of aluminum, titanium, and steel. To fly one of these jets is to join the ranks of just over a thousand active Navy and Marine Corps Hornet aviators. The journey to become a carrier-qualified F.A. 18 pilot begins thousands of miles away from hostile territory in the peaceful farmland of Central California. Naval Air Station Lemoore is the Navy's newest and largest master jet air station. The flat terrain and lack of neighbors makes Lemoore a perfect spot. Talk about maneuvering out of control flight. Here, aviators who have passed their basic flight training learn how to fly the F-A-18. It's a mentally and physically challenging program. The newest class of trainees will undergo 300 hours of classwork and at least 300 hours more in simulators and training aircraft before they can even step into the cockpit of an F-A-18 jet. Lemoore's Flying Eagles of VFA-122 are among the best in the Navy when it comes to training elite aviators, preparing them for battle. A fleet replacement squadron trains the frontline pilots. That's what we do. The folks that we get into VFA 122 have never flown anything tactical, but when they leave here, they go right to a frontline fleet squadron. 
To forge elite pilots out of raw aviators, trainers here push their students harder than most other squadrons. We have roughly 100 students of some type in training at uh, any one time here. We're flying probably more than uh, we expected to, certainly more than anybody else expected us to, to the tune of 18,000 hours last year alone, where a, another squadron with a similar mission like this one typically would fly 12 to 13, maybe 15,000 flight hours. To put that in perspective, a fleet squadron on a very good year might fly 5,000 hours. Since the delivery of the first F-A-18s in 1980, Lemoore has been known as the home of the Hornet. Nearly 365 days a year, from the early morning on, the skies over Lemoore echo with the deafening roar of F-A-18 jet fighters. The F-A-18 that these trainees hope to fly is a much more sophisticated machine than earlier Navy jets. The F-A-18 is the first jet designated both F for fighter and A for attack. The deployment of a multi-role strike fighter had been a long time goal for the Navy, and the F-A-18 has fulfilled that goal and more. While past planes like the F-4 could be configured as either a bomber or a fighter for a single mission, the F-A-18 can fill both roles simultaneously. The beauty of the F-18 is that you can carry a number of weapons across the wing, six, seven, eight weapons, that can all be independently targeted on separate aim points in a target area. In the past, you may have needed, you know, a whole strike from a carrier to be able to do that. Now you just do it with one airplane. The F-A-18's multi-role capability has made it the mainstay of the carrier air wing. On the deck of an aircraft carrier, F-A-18s undergo constant structural stress caused by the violence of landing. But they're built to take it. I think what you'll notice, you know, versus an Air Force aircraft, is just look at how beefy the landing gear are on any Navy airplane. And that's just to withstand the shock of, of coming down at about a, a descent rate of 750 foot per minute rate of descent, flying that three degree or three and a half degree glide slope. The landing gear is built to withstand that shock. With 15 years of F-A-18 experience, Dan Dino Martin knows full well the challenges of fleet aviation. He successfully touched down on carriers over 400 times. Landing an F-A-18 is the equivalent to bringing a loaded semi-trailer from 150 miles per hour to a full stop in less than three seconds. The F-A-18 is also built to sustain a punishing takeoff. Yeah, another thing you'll notice about the aircraft, the nose gear is going to be real beefy, but what you, what's this ugly looking thing right here hanging off the front of the nose gear? That's our launch bar, and that is going to be hydraulically extended and retracted. It goes down into that shuttle, it goes down a cat track, and that shuttle grabs onto the tip of that launch bar, and that's what propels you down the catapult stroke. Powerful engines, General Electric's F-404s, are each capable of generating 18,000 pounds of thrust, an astounding one-fourth of the thrust of the rocket that sent the Mercury spacecraft into orbit. The F-A-18's twin engines have built-in redundancy so that if one engine goes down, the other can power the plane. Despite all the extra weight needed to land, launch, and keep the F-A-18 aloft, its power and small size make it the most maneuverable aircraft in the Navy's airborne arsenal. Racing at top speeds of Mach 1.8, the Hornet can also climb at a rate of over 45,000 feet per minute. 